Hey there friends, it's Art Instructor Mike here, uh, here with a lesson for you, an art lesson for Imagine's uh, online lesson resources. Uh, today we're going to do blind contour drawing, which will be a fun time. Uh, just kind of a pre-note, I keep referring to uh, subject and object interchangeably throughout the lesson. Uh, didn't mean to, I just, it's just what happened, so uh, just ignore that, but I hope you enjoy the lesson. Uh, can't wait to see you all in class again here soon, and we miss you, so we'll um, just get it rolling here. Hey there friends, this is Mike, art instructor from Lafayette, here to uh, do a lesson with you today. Today, the name of the lesson is Blind Contour Drawing. So the definition of that is an, it's an exercise where an artist draws the contour of a subject without looking at the paper. Um, it's kind of a tough exercise. We've done it in class, in person a couple of times. Um, and this technique was introduced by Kimon Nicolaitis um, in his book, The Natural Way to Draw. Um, I think that was written in the early 1900s, so this technique has been around for a while. But it's a really fun technique to um, to do to learn a little bit more about, um, you know, getting your your concepts that you have in your head down onto paper. Whatever your inspirations are, whatever creativity or creative ideas you have, um, getting them down onto paper. So today. The only materials we're going to need are two pieces of paper, one drawing implement of your choosing. It could be a pencil, it could be a pen, it could be a marker, whatever you want, anything that draws. So, And then the only other two things we're going to use are a simple uh, object and maybe a more complex object or just any kind of subject that you can think of to draw. So today I found this little uh, penguin figurine. So that'll be my simple object. It's relatively simple in its form, uh, not a whole lot of complex lines to it. And then the other object that I'm gonna use is my hand, because your hand is pretty, uh, there's a lot of different lines to it. There's a lot of complexities in where your hand, uh, when you make gripping motions, when you bend and move it, it's, uh, it's a little bit more of a complex subject. So. We're just going to jump right in here. Uh, so our first exercise, we're going to do two exercises with two different subjects. And our first exercise is going to be to look at the object, do not look at the paper, and only use one line for the whole thing. So instead of lifting our pen or, or writing implement off of the paper, we're just going to use one line the whole time. Just to, to get this form. So let's start with our first simple subject. So I'm gonna start drawing our penguin. I'm gonna start just somewhere random on the paper. I think I'll start right here. And I'm just looking at the penguin. I'm not looking at the paper in any way, shape or form. So I'm gonna start at the neck, I think. Go up. Down. If you accidentally look at the paper, it's all right. We're not, no one's holding you to anything. We're just having fun and here to learn. I just looked at the paper myself, so no big deal. Um, so now I'm going down the left side, flipper following along with my eyes, the whole contour of the shape. And you can actually go you can re-go over a line if you want um, so that you get the whole form. It's not a problem at all. So going up, doing the foot. Yeah, you're going to be tempted to want to look at the paper a lot during this exercise because it's so... you can lose your place relatively easily. Okay, I'm going down the other side, doing the other... Flipper of the penguin, um, back up to the top, all right, go over that again, 
Boom, we're done. Whoa. Looks uh, a little bit different, relatively similar. I think I got the general shape of the feet and the flipper, uh, but it's easy to lose track. You kind of end up getting a little bit off base. Um, well, I did up here, but uh, it's really easy to, to get off off kilter so um yeah so we're just gonna reuse this piece of paper flip it over and we're gonna do our more complex shape now um, i'm gonna do my hand in i want to have a position where there's as many contours as possible just so we can get that so once again i'm looking at my hand not looking at the paper watching my hand the whole time so I'm just gonna start it off over on the bottom left hand corner here I like to use paper that's a little bit uh, a little bit more surface area to it um, you can use whatever size paper you'd like uh, but I tend to like to have plenty of room to breathe here so I'm just following all of those lines in my thumb back down following yeah it's it's a it's it is a tough exercise you you tend to lose your uh, sense of where you are on the paper relatively easy when you don't um, when you can't see it so but this is definitely a really helpful exercise when you are kind of learning to draw and learning to visualize things and just learning about uh, following lines as you see them. Doing knuckles here. Go down to my veins. You know what? I'm going to call it right there. I think that's where it's gonna be so whoa <laughs> that is a uh, that's different huh yeah it's a uh, got a got kind of off task like I did with the with the penguin up toward the head but you can see I kind of had where my fingers were supposed to line out up here but I kind of ended up doing the detailed contours over here it's funny how that works okay so we are going to move on to our second method and our second method is very similar but this is quite a bit more difficult our second method is do not look at the object or the paper and use only one line so I know that's a it's a difficult task but um, I think we can do it or at least give it our best try here so this in this part of the exercise it's best to look kind of at the wall in front of you or to the left to the right somewhere that's not anywhere near the paper or the object that we have so I'm gonna kind of look at my penguin just study the contours get them fresh in my brain okay now I'm gonna put the penguin aside I'm going to go to my paper. I'm going to look at the paper to find my starting point. I think I'm going to start at the neck like I did last time. This time I am going to look straight ahead and definitely not at the paper. So here we go. I'm looking straight ahead and I am going to try to remember all these details. Okay, I think I got the, the beak. Going down, I remember there being a kind of collarbone, chin area there, and now kind of where the chest 
cuts out. I'm gonna go down the side contour of the body. Go over, do the flipper. Yeah, this is where really, you get really tempted to uh, look at the paper because you have no idea where you are. But the more you do it, uh, the better or the easier it becomes. So I just did the feet. I'm gonna go back over those lines, back down to the bottom, go up the left side of the body, go back down. I know the flipper was kind of down to its side there, go back up, and it should be back at the head, I don't know, we'll see, but I think I'm good, I'm going to look down now, whoa, <laughs> yeah, that one's a little bit different too, but yeah, uh, it's really interesting how your mind's eye sees, um, sees these details, and, you know, connects it to your hand, and <laughs> The result is pretty interesting. Okay, so that was our simple drawing. Okay, so we're going to do our uh, second drawing. I think I'm going to keep my hand in that original placement that I had it before, kind of like a half fist kind of thing. Um, yeah, we're going to, once again, I'm going to study all the different contours, shape, general shape, look at where the veins and knuckles and lines and my fingers are and uh, yeah we are going to start drawing so I'm going to find my starting point down by my wrist I think the left hand side once again looking dead on at the wall or in the corner or something um, but just anywhere but the object and the paper so starting point looking at the wall okay here we go First, second knuckle, go back up, kind of remember my finger being exposed there a little bit, next knuckle, Increases. This is also a great exercise to do with um, faces. It's a lot of fun um, doing this exercise. Like if you have game night at your house or hanging out with friends or family to do blind contours, it's can uh, faces are particularly entertaining uh, when you see how everybody does it differently. It's a fun little experiment. Okay, I think I finished the vein. I think I'm calling that good. Wow. That looks different. <laughs> Definitely different than my first one. So now what we'll do is we'll take our drawings that we have, compare them. You know, not, not actually that different, but let's see it relative to the subject. Interesting. Very cool. I'll go ahead and flip these over. Take a look at our hand drawing relative to what I had. Oh yeah. <laughs> it's a, makes for a really interesting um, end result, uh, especially when you do these two different techniques. But um, yeah, uh, that is blind contour drawing. Um, please feel free to uh, get in touch with me if you want to do more activities like this. Um, I have a lot of fun uh, doing these, and I hope hope you enjoyed it too. Uh, looking forward to 
having everyone back in class. But until then, I'll be coming out with more of these. So thank you so much, friends, for signing up. And uh, we'll see you next time. Thank you.